Yo, what's up, guys? Your boy Eugene Smiles. Da, 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 da. I got an Aaliyah shirt on. Can y'all see it? Boom, boom. One of the Mia, Mia, one of the many <laughs> Aaliyah shirts that I have. Um, and guess what? I actually ordered the whole like box sets from Black Ground, the Aaliyah and One in a Million box set. And I got two more shirts on the way. So I will be doing unboxing for those once I receive those probably soon, pretty soon. So we're here. We've been waiting. We've been waiting. We've been waiting for the Aaliyah Red album. We have been waiting for it. And baby, we are finally here. If you have not checked out my revisiting of One in a Million, I'll put it up in the corner. You check that out. It's doing pretty well. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying my videos, my content. Y'all, thank you so much. I love doing YouTube videos. And I love revisiting um, albums. And I think I'm going to do this again. I think I'm going to continue to do this. Whose albums do you want me to revisit? You know, I'm probably going to have to revisit some Missy albums, some Kim albums. I don't know. It, give me some albums that are at least 15 years old. And I'm going to revisit. We're going to review them. And we're going to talk about them. But we're talking about Miss Baby Girl. Baby girl, Aaliyah, Aaliyah, the Red Album. Um, <sighs> bittersweet, bittersweet. But before we get started, man, y'all like, share, subscribe. Make sure that you follow me, Eugene Smiles, on everything with the Z at the end. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. All of that. All of it. All of it. And I keep forgetting to mention this, but the Aaliyah Funko Pop giveaway is still going on. When I reach 2,500 subscribers, I think that's what I said, 2,500 subscribers, I will pick a winner to receive the Aaliyah Funko Pop. I bought three. I have three to give away. So every 500 subscribers, we're going to give we're gonna give one away. You have to make sure you're subscribed. You have to make sure that you're commenting on my videos, on my Aaliyah videos. It's fine. If you want to comment on other videos, that's good. But the Aaliyah videos are the ones that I'm going to be definitely checking on. And um, yeah, subscribe, like, comment. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Whatever. Hmm, right. So let's go to where was going on in Aaliyah's life since One in a Million. So we can see the headspace that Aaliyah was in. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. So, um, One in a Million, the album, classic. You know, she had, you know, I didn't realize that there was like a seven month, I think, I think it was like a seven month gap in between the last set of singles which you know um the one you i gave my heart to and hot life fire were released as a like dual single release and um uh four page letter there was like a seven month release does anybody know why that was i mean released seven month gap does anybody know why there was such a gap in between that and that probably explains why they were released together. I, I don't know. If y'all know, comment below, DM me, let me know. We'll talk about it. But One in a Million is double platinum. Classic. She's changed the sound of radio. She's introduced us to Timbaland and Missy Elliott as producers and songwriters. It's lit. And if you, it's so funny. There is, an, there is a video somebody did talking about music before One in a Million and then music after One in a Million. I mean, even Mariah Carey's production had changed. Like, everybody's production had changed to that. And the thing is, a lot of these people weren't getting Missy and Timbaland to do their songs. They were getting other producers to emulate and copy Timbaland and Missy to have that sound. And Missy talked about it on a song called Beat Biters on The Real World. I mentioned this before. Go check it out. It was true. They was really copying. Like, Missy really needs to be saying, these bitches is my son. She's the one that needs to be saying that. And Kim. So, uh, in between that time, we also got Aaliyah performing for the Clintons. Yes, she performed at Christmas on Washington for President Clinton. She performed two songs. It was like a full song. And then she performed another song with some other people. It sounded amazing. I literally watch it every uh, Christmas holidays multiple times. She sounded amazing. She looked amazing. Baby girl, we miss you. But are you that somebody? One of the biggest soundtrack songs of all time 
one of the biggest songs of that year. Unfortunately, had the rules been different, which is so weird because rules, charting rules were so different. Like you had to have a CD single out and all this stuff. And you had to, it had to be, the, the rules were different for you to be able to chart. Nowadays, bitches just chart by releasing an album. They release the album and, and their, their non-single can chart because it's getting streamed. It wasn't the same way back in the day. Are You That Somebody would have definitely been a number one hit. Um, the video is iconic. Her look is iconic. They dress it up as Aaliyah from uh, Are You That Somebody every single year. And um, yeah, I think it was like 21 on the charts. But it was one of the biggest songs, one of her best songs, one of her most recognizable songs. And not only was it produced by Timbaland, but it was written by Static Major. Keep that in mind. We're going to revisit that later. Journey to the Past. Uh, I used to love Journey to the Past uh, from the Anastasia soundtrack. It is such a beautiful song. It was so different to see Aaliyah sing a song. I don't know. I guess to me it was different. I mean, and she looked amazing in the video. The song ended up being nominated for an Oscar. And guess what? Aaliyah performed at the Oscars. She was the youngest artist to perform at the Oscars. I think she was like 17 at the time. She got a simple black dress off the rack at some store. I mean, the face is giving Oscars anyway. Baby girl is bomb. Um, and she sung at the Oscars. The, the song didn't win, but she sung there. She made history. History. Then we get into Romeo Must Die. Aaliyah had always talked about wanting to get into acting. Romeo Must Die was it, and Romeo Must Die was a number one movie. She did all of her stunts in the movie. Most artists are going to allow somebody else to do their stunts. She wanted to do all her stunts. Jet Li taught her some things. She wanted to do them. She did them. And not only was the song the, the movie number one on, on box office, the song was number one. The first song, the only song to go number one, strictly off airplay. Y'all was playing the hell out of Try Again. Again, it was written by Static. It was produced by Timbaland. Aaliyah was dancing crazy. Of course, another iconic look that people dress as every year. The Every year they're dressing as Aaliyah Try Again. is you see, When you see it, you're like, oh, they're Aaliyah. Hands down. You know what I'm saying? Um, number one song, number one box office. Amazing. Around this time, she also did do MTV Diary, which we got to kind of see a little bit more of Aaliyah, um, you know, doing press for her album that was coming up. Uh, I'm skipping around to doing press for her album that was coming up, doing um, having fun, seeing fans come up to her and just seeing her talk about it. And this is where we get that very memorable speech of it was all worth it. The times when you're tired, times when you're a bit sad, it was all worth it. And it's like, every time I see it, I'm just like, golly, that just, knowing that she died, you know, doing work, uh, I'm not going to cry. You're going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Um, we also got the VMAs. So she went to the VMAs. She was shooting Queen of the Dam and flew, I think she said, 22 hours just in honor of the nominations. She was nominated for three awards, won two of them, best Best song from a movie, um, best female video, which she beat out like Britney and Christina Aguilera. Um, and these are all for Try Again. And she was also nominated for best choreography, best choreography, which I think would have went to Fatima, which should have won. I mean, do you see the choreography in Try Again? Y'all don't get it. Y'all, do you see that choreography in Try Again? How intricate that shit is, how non stop it is, sickening. It lost to NSYNC's Bye Bye Bye. That's what it lost to. Okay, I guess. She won two awards. Um, yeah, she wore that amazing yellow and black dress. I want to say it's a Cavalli dress. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a fashion, I'm not a fashion guy, but I think that's what it was. So she won two awards. She was offered a movie um role in scary movie. And, you know, just doing a little bit more research before I started the video, she was actually offered the role of Brenda which is by the legendary Regina Hall. Um, Aaliyah turned it down because basically she did not want to start off her acting career in that type of role, which made sense. 
Um, if you're going to start off your acting career, do you want to be, you know, in a comedic role where you're not the main character and you're not going to probably really show your acting skills? You're going to kind of be slapstick. Or do you want to start off in a role where you're the main character and you're also doing the soundtrack? She executive produced the Royal Must Die soundtrack also. So all those songs you hear, she's probably the reason they're on there. And it's so funny because I was re-listening to that, which is now on streaming services. A lot of those songs, even the Destiny's Child song, sound like it should have been an Aaliyah song. It sounded like Aaliyah maybe was possibly going to do the entire soundtrack. But she was like, you know what? I'm going to do a couple of songs and I'm going to get some of my friends to do a couple of songs. Even the way that Beyonce is singing, it's very, those low tones is very Aaliyah-ish. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Queen of the Dam, again, she went back to filming Queen of the Dam, finished that. She was getting ready for The Matrix. She was filming a couple scenes for The Matrix. All of this was going on in between her album. And then she was also dating Dame Dash. Uh, and we were also seeing her pivot away from primarily working with Timberland and Missy Elliott. Which says a lot. Because a lot of people, a lot of artists, y'all remember Ring Pops? A lot of artists um, are scared to step out. And Aaliyah was never scared about her career. I'm pretty sure she was just like, you know, if I ever decide, you know, if I decide to flop, if I ever flop, um, I'm just going to move on to something else. You know what I'm saying? She she was already going to be the Hollywood it girl anyway. So for her to take the long ass breaks that she took in between albums, give us a couple songs in between, give us a couple soundtracks in, in between and have hit soundtracks hits she gave us hits she took breaks and still gave us hits girls can't even take breaks for six months now what six months y'all doing a whole nother album do you not believe in your work do you not hmm oh and, and one in a million was a top 10 album with the re-release top 10 25 years later available on soundcloud and available on youtube but still people were listening to it on streaming top 10 hmm yeah, so we got to see Aaliyah grow. We got to see her step into the music career. I mean, the movie career that she want. We got to see her take a break and enjoy life. She was a young woman. She graduated high school. We got to see her take her time. She did a lot of promo for this album. Um, she ended up going on Regis and Kelly. She ended up doing um, Jay Leno, which we got to see her last performance. Y'all, go watch that Jay Leno performance. Aaliyah looked like she was not, like she didn't want to be there. Like she was just not with it. Now we do, we, we're going to talk about the one in a million and rock the boat. We're going to talk about that. So let's get to this track listing. First of all, the first single was We Need a Resolution. I was having this conversation and they were, my one of my friends asked me, well, did you think that should have been the first single? And I said, you know, yes and no. See, y'all remember, look, look at that. We used to have CDs. We had CDs. I think this had the DVD in it. Yep, this had the DVD. Look at that. We used to look at pictures because we didn't have internet, y'all. Our internet was at an infant stage, so we couldn't really see internet like that. I saw Y'all young kids are probably like, this nigga old as fuck. I ain't old ho. Um... <laughs> Yeah, like look at look at this. I want to show y'all something. And this is why this is why y'all can never talk about our artists because our artists did a lot more work than what y'all artists do. Y'all artists really don't be doing nothing and be flopping. Like y'all y'all have the internet. Niggas listen to y'all shit and it just to just just to see if they like it. They listen to it and it counts. We used to have to go to the store. You know, they used to have a little station where you can listen to CDs. That didn't count towards sales. You know, y'all stealing CDs didn't count towards sales. Pirating music didn't count towards sales. This is why artists nowadays can have a gold single in a week or a, a multi-platinum single. Like, there's so many multi-platinum singles. And I'd be like, I ain't never heard this song before. We ain't finna, we ain't finna even talk about it. Um, We need a resolution. 
We Need a Revolution ended up being the first single. So after doing some research, we realized or find out that Aaliyah wanted Loose Rap to be the first single. Loose Rap is the second song on the album. Loose Rap is my shit. Loose Rap is my shit. It's so smooth. It's so smooth. But We Need, we need a Revolution was pushed to the front because basically Aaliyah's label, Barry, <sighs> wanted all the Timbaland tracks to be pushed to the front. He wanted them, Aaliyah and Timbaland have been making hits since the One in a Million era, the two soundtrack hits. Um, he wanted the Timbaland songs to be the singles for the album because he felt like they were guaranteed hits. Um, we Need Revolution is my song. I love the video. It's a beautiful song. The But it just was not a radio-friendly song. Even now, it still doesn't fit that that same kind of format of a hit song. The The beat was an awkward beat. It was kind of this offbeat tone. The way she was singing, you sleep on the wrong side. I'm catching a bad vibe. And it's contagious. What's the latest? Speak your heart. Like, the way she's singing is not a way that you would sing or write. That's something that you would want to be really catchy. It was a really, like, just different song. So radio hit, no, I understand why it wasn't that huge on radio because it just wasn't a simple ass radio song. It was something very futuristic. That's why when you're listening to We Need a Resolution Now, you it, it still sounds like it's something that's different than what you hear now because it wasn't simple. Um, I think visually it's the amazing video. I don't know what I would have... I don't know if I would have made We Need a Revolution, we need a, revolution a first single. But we're going to talk about what song would have made the first single. Crazy. Y'all, I want y'all to know. Just like how Aaliyah put Timbaland and Missy on the map with One in a Million. She was about to put Sean uh, Garnett, a.k.a. Static Major, on the map as a songwriter. He did have some success after she passed, but I think had she been able to like really promote the album, people would have been knocking his door down because he wrote We Need a Resolution. Um, Timberland produced it. He wrote it. Amazing song. Y'all know what it's about. You and, your, you and your nigga fighting. We need to figure this out. You lying and shit. I could have put my clothes on. Like, Why are you doing all this foolishness? We need to figure this out. Speak your heart. Don't bite your tongue. Speak. Loose rap. Again, Static is featured on the track. He's singing background on it. He writes the song. Eric Steep produces the song. This is such a smooth song. This is so quintessential Aaliyah. The smooth production. The smooth vocals. I'm sick and tired of the loose rap. It just was such a smooth, smooth song. I don't think this would have been a first, a great first single. It's one of them songs that got the vibe. I think it was it was great as a album cut. You know what I'm saying? First single wise, I don't think this would have hit harder than We Need a Resolution. But this is one of my favorite Ali your songs. And once and, and with it being on streaming services, it's going to get repeated all day every day it's gonna get repeated uh loose rap definitely one of my favorite Aliyah songs what should have been the first single was rock the boat Woo! rock the motherfucking boat again static wrote this song it was produced by eric seats did y'all know that eric seats the producer almost threw rock the boat away he was he made it he was listening to it. He didn't like it. He was about to delete. De delete. Static heard heard it through his headphones. Static said, hold up. What's that? He said, oh, it's nothing. It's trash. She said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What, what's that? Li, 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 uh, it's a lollipop. What's that? He heard it. Started writing. Rock the Boat was born. Rock the Boat for a couple for two different reasons it's going to always want to be going always going to be one of those songs that are is going to be like when you think of greatest hits Aliyah, rock the boat's always going to be on there one because 
of her passing away after doing the music video. Two, because it's such a smooth song. It's so sexy. She sounds amazing. I love the like spread out vocals. I she just she was skating on this song. She was skating on this song. Skating. Like Rock the Boat even now still sounds Let me tell y'all something about this album. This album is literally the blueprint for albums like Lemonade, like Beyonce's Lemonade. Beyonce really was trying out so many different genres, four or five, six, was this the seventh? That was like her seventh album or something. She was like, this album, I feel like Beyonce was listening to Aaliyah's album was like, I want to do something like that. Because Aaliyah literally hits every single genre, every single genre on this album and it kills it every single time. And she did not have to depend on on a popular producer or songwriter for the song. Aaliyah did that. First song, she was with that fool, you know, had that second album, uh, first song, first album. Second album, she was with primarily Missy and Timbaland. Um, third, primarily Static and, and Eric Beats and um, Digital Black. Like, she did not have to depend on a producer she stepped out of the box and she made legendary shit. Timeless, timeless music. Rock the Boat should have been the first single. I felt like that would have been, that would have been like a, oh shit, is this Aaliyah? Oh shit, this is like, I think it would have been that moment. I think it would have definitely been a top 10 single. I think it would have been amazing. Aaliyah was supposed to perform at the VMAs. Um, if she didn't pass away, <sighs> rock the boat. Y'all know what it is. More Than a Woman. More Than a Woman was also a part of that package deal of wanting to push the Timbaland singles to the front of the album. More Than a Woman was going to be the second, um, was going to be the second single. Uh, Leah had, you know, performed it twice. It was very, it was very weird. The rollout was really strange. And I feel like a lot of it was Aaliyah fighting against Barry, trying to get her way, and he wanting it a certain way. I feel like that's what a lot of it was. Um, and, you know, Tim Land also wanted his songs to be singles, whatever. More Than a Woman, y'all know what it is. Iconic dance. That video is crazy. That Chanel drunk suit is crazy. The song is amazing. Again, written by Static. Static was not playing on this album. Even the beat, just Timbaland, Timbaland is amazing. He His beats ain't as good as they used to be. Um, but y'all know the vibes, more than a woman. Uh, Never No More. So let's get let's get to the, the songs that were not singles. Never No More really got to showcase her vocal growth. It really got to talk about abuse, which is strange, you know, what we're hearing now and all this. Um, cause she said she wanted this album to be a reflection of her. Aliyah had never wanted to be a songwriter. She literally wanted the songwriters to write their stories, to incorporate her story, to incorporate her, th her thoughts, and then for her to sing, her to put her all into it. Never No More, um, it's just so beautiful. And I, you hear the horse in the beginning I know she was going to do a video for this. It's so cinematic. Um, it's, she's really going in on this song. And, it, you know, it's a song about abuse and not dealing, I'm not doing it anymore. And the thing is, she's giving you another chance. Like, don't, do, if you ever do this again, and I had to tell somebody, I was like, if you act like this again, I'm out. And guess what? Single, baby. <laughs> single baby let's get into number six i care for you i had always wondered um because this is a song that was actually meant for the one in a million album which says a lot this song was made in 96 um and i think i did ask miss missy on twitter if the song was recorded in those sessions or was it recorded um 
with the Aliyah sessions and she said it was recorded in 96. Like it was recorded back then, 96. And you know, they, the album was already done. They it mastered or whatever. So say so she ended up saving it to 2000, like four years. She ended up saving it for this album. Classic. Who do you know is recording a song four or five years before they release it? And it comes out and it's still a hit. And it still it still sounds updated. Who do you know is doing that? Aaliyah. She did that. Mm-hmm. I Care For You is, an, is one of those songs that we just get to see the vulnerability in her voice. Hey now, baby. It's it's just such a beautiful song. It's so classic. Um, and hopefully with Aliyah's music being released, we're able to start seeing her songs being performed on, performed on these singing shows. Cause I want to see somebody on the voice or American Idol or somebody sing, I care for you sing the one I gave my heart to. Like, I want to see y'all girls go at it. Like, let's go extra smooth. This is one of the songs when I first heard it, I was like, ah, okay. But then just getting into it later, again, produced, I mean, written by Static, um, produced by Eric Seats and Rapture. She's just talking to the guy, telling him how, it's just, it's so, Aaliyah was really building a sound. And I feel like this, she didn't want, the simple beats, you know, she didn't want the simple production. She wanted something that was going to be a little different, a little awkward that she can work with. And I'm just sure that she would have probably had crazy dances for this. Extra Smooth is definitely one of those songs that you're like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about this at first. And then you find yourself singing it, singing it, singing it. Extra Smooth, you know the vibe. Read Between the Lines is I know Read Between Lines is going to be a single. It's one of those songs that you like, you listen to now and knowing that Aaliyah can dance and you're probably like, oh shit, she would have fucked this up. Read Between the Lines it really takes us into that salsa realm, um, which I don't know if any of the black girls have done salsa yet. Aaliyah was going to really fuck this up. And I feel like Read Between Lines would have been a single. And I feel like it would have really fucked up pop radio. <sighs> you got to read between the lines. Like, I just, you just, I just, uh, Fatima. Fatima, um, do you want to let us know what the choreography was going to look like for the Aaliyah era? Um, that would be amazing. Um, I know you're probably not going to get paid for it. Um, you know, I could do an IOU. For that um but i just feel like read between the lines would have been that so like that is my song that's another song that's gonna be on super repeat on the streaming services spotify baby don't block my account because i'm playing the same song a hundred times you got the nerve you got the nerve literally is her going off you just you see you see the moods just change. You see the moods you see the moods change, and I'm wondering. I wish I was in the writers' room. I'm wondering what story Aaliyah told. Was she identified with Mo's like? I know y'all gonna be listening to the singles, but y'all need to definitely be listening to the album cuts and think about it. Because a lot of people are doing like Aaliyah revisiting videos and stuff, and they're it's a lot of these young kids, and they're just like, oh, one in a million is okay. You you weren't there. You weren't there in '96. Like and listen to it, but don't comment. You weren't there. You weren't even born. Everything that you're listening to now, those beats came from that era, came from that music. So you can't Tend to tell me that one in a million is all right. Baby, shut up. Um, <laughs> I refuse. And I refuse. I refuse to have one more sleepless cinematic. 
I feel like, you know what? I don't know if Aaliyah was thinking this, but she she could have gave us, she could have gave us a visual album. She could have gave us a mini movie with these songs, like the love songs. It's the, it's the I love you. It's the stop fucking with me. It's the, you know, we try, we need to figure this out. It's the, you know, I could be the bones in your closet, you know, you know what I'm saying? more than woman, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, it, it's so much of that. And she was such a grown woman. Y'all remember, Ali was 21. She was, she was 20, 21 recording this. And this album is very, very much mature. Y'all 20 something, 30 something year olds is making this. I ain't finna drag y'all phase. It's whatever. So it's whatever is very dear to my heart because that's one of the songs. That's the first song I listened to after I found out that Aaliyah died. That is the song when I seen it scrolling and everything. And I was just like um, waiting for the news. And I had put the CD in my CD player that I had in my headboard. And when she said, just, she just like a, when she said, just, I immediately started crying. It's so smooth. One th Aaliyah's vo vocals were so silky. And one thing about her production, they knew what to do to not really overpower her and like to give her just that, just enough, just so she can ride. Like Aaliyah used to ride the F out of these beats. It's whatever. Classic. Y'all, check it out. I can be... Again, oh, and those those last two songs were written by Static. <laughs> and uh, Benjamin Bush wrote, You Got the Nerve. Static was not playing on his album. I Can Be, for y'all that are familiar with uh, Tank, the R&B singer, he wrote, I Can Be. And um, Tank's albums are going to be released that were on background, too. You can hear, you can hear that sound on there. Um, she... You know, she like, hey, I could be the other woman that's in your life. You know what I'm saying? I get it because, you know, sometimes you see some people on social media and you and you know they with somebody, right? And you just like, ooh, baby, if you slip up, I might just be the reason that you cheat. You know what I'm saying? Um, I might not be proud of it, but I can be the other nigga in your life. <laughs> like, that's, I get it. You know, don't nobody... <laughs> Aaliyah was on to something. No, I do not condone cheating. Um, but I'm also not in a relationship. So, it's not on me. <laughs> those were the day. Those were the day. She has so many gems. And Aaliyah used to ride her albums out. She wrote One in a Million out well over a year. Like a year and a half. Ali used to ride her albums out. Those were the days... Just basically reminiscing on when it was, it was good between y'all. Um, and listening to this album when I was 15, 14, 15, and then listening to it now, um, I get it. <laughs> you meet somebody, y'all have an amazing time and, you know, it, it doesn't work out. And then you're just like, you know, reminiscing but then they want to come back and you're like, oh no, you know, we can reminisce. But no, we're done. Those were the days. Not walking through walking through the park. Like, no, no, no. Shoot. Those, those were those were. Those were the days. Those days are over with. Y'all better wake up. Listen to the singles, listen to the rest of the album. Crazy. What if? What if? So Alia had been trying. She wanted to work with Corn. Um, Corn worked on the um, Queen of the Damn soundtrack. She also wanted to work with uh, Trent. I said it in my other videos. Another rock artist she wanted to work with. Scheduling conflicts. I'm very much wondering if they were going to work together on this song or if they had another song. Aaliyah. What if is rock banger? If I would have been able to see her live. And the lights would have been off and I would have heard this guitar. It would have been a rap. It would have been a freaking rap. Like Aaliyah, what if is that rock banger? And for her to do that when nobody else was doing it, I don't think another black I don't think no black girls was doing rock since Janet, and that was the 80s. 
at this time. So for her to step out and do that and do that sound and it sounded so fucking amazing. It would have been amazing to see what that would have looked like on stage, what that video would look like, like what we would have ultimately got from the visual. Oh, Lord. Messed up. Messed up is another one of those songs. Digital. Key beats a it like a lot of this album was made with visuals in mind and we were unable to get the visuals and fully live in this album. This album would have sold way more. This album would have won multiple awards had we got to be able to promote it. Because a lot of times y'all have to realize albums don't necessarily sell because they're good albums. They sell because they have the promo behind them. Because a lot of people with horrible albums can still sell a platinum, double platinum, whatever, because they have the promo. They have the promo, they're performing it. If you perform it, people want to go listen to it, this, that, and the third, and they can, people can catch on to things. And I felt like, even when I was looking at the singles from One in a Million, she was just throwing out bangers. Like, I, when I was a child, I swore One in a Million was the first single. If your girl only knew it was the first single, but One in a Million is one of the signature Aaliyah songs, and it was like the third single. <laughs> Four Page Letter was the fourth single. You know what I'm saying? Like, and those were signature songs for her. So it was just like, you know, I'm going to throw these songs out that, to see how y'all like them, but then I'm going to hit y'all with these bangers. And I felt like that's what she was kind of doing, probably reluctantly, with the Aaliyah album because she had so many bangers. Um, there is going to be a bonus track of Try Again. Again, the Rumi Must Die soundtrack is out on streaming services. Like, what is your favorite Aaliyah song? What do you think her singles... What do you think... Shit. What is your favorite Aaliyah song? What songs do you think would have been singles? Like... I got the vinyl coming on the way. I, I ordered the vinyl for Aaliyah and One in a Million in the box set. So I will be doing videos for those. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, comment so I can enter you into that Funko Pop. Tell your friends to comment. Send all of the Aaliyah gang, Aaliyah Angels, Aaliyah Navy. What 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 are y'all? What are we calling ourselves? I don't know. Aaliyah fans, y'all come over here. What albums? I got to start picking albums. I got so many things. I got to start picking albums and revisiting albums. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about the effects of it. And Aaliyah, we got to get this to number one. Number one. See y'all next time. <laughs>